Find your passion and pursue it. I strongly believe that this is the way to live your life. We're so lucky to be young. We have the time and the energy and the opportunity to do whatever we want, to go full throttle down whatever path we choose to pursue. So start now. Just get out there and do it. Don't think about why you can't or shouldn't be able to. Just do it. To paraphrase from something Steve Jobs once said in an interview, a lot of people think the world works like this. You follow the rules. You do what everyone else says is right. In school, you decorate your binder the best, you get the best grades, you make the teacher happy, and then you leave school and you get the best job that you can and you work your way up the job ladder until at some point you automatically succeed. But the problem with thinking this way is that real life doesn't work like that. Real life is messy. Real life is complicated and real life has shortcuts. And the sooner you realize that the world around you was built by people just like you and you can change it and you can influence it, the sooner you can build what you dream. So I strongly believe in thinking this way and thinking this way leads you to ask yourself two questions every day. What is your goal? And how can you get closer to your goal? And so today I'd like to tell you about how I find a way to answer those two questions by trying to pursue my goal of becoming a scientist. So there's one thing you'll have to know about me, and that's that ever since I was a kid, the one thing I've wanted more than anything else was to be a biologist. And it all started with this. This, this is DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. It's the chemical structure that encodes our genes. I saw it for the first time when I was eight, and it was so beautiful. It was so complex. It was this whirling, churning mass of atoms. I couldn't believe that this defined us, that this work of art told us what we were. And from that point on, I was hooked. I couldn't think about anything else, and I had to be a biologist. So I started working with whatever I could find. We didn't have a lot, but we had a local museum, so I would go there on the weekends, and I had a little notebook, and I would watch simulations about how the cell worked and then write down everything that I saw so I could remember it. I was such a little geek. We had a sidewalk outside our house, and I used to draw the structure of nucleotides, the building blocks of DNA. And that was how I met a scientist for the first time. A guy walking by stopped to talk to me about these little drawings, and it turned out he worked on the same things. So there I was, building labs in my basement and dissecting snails and doing a ton of other gross stuff I won't tell you about. But I had a problem. I was just a little 12-year-old kid in New Zealand, and I didn't have the tools that I needed to be a biologist. Now, they had incredible machines that could build DNA from scratch and make millions of copies of it, but I didn't have access to them. So that's where the second part of the process comes in, taking a leap. I was just this little kid and I couldn't access these machines, but I read about a brilliant biologist in America, a woman called Cynthia Kenyon. And she was working on ways to reverse the aging process in worms. And she sounded amazing, so I took a chance. And one of the first emails I ever sent as a kid was to this woman, asking if I could come work in her lab. And I was so nervous when I did it, because there was no way this brilliant biologist would ever reply to a twerpy little 12-year-old emailing her out of the blue from New Zealand. But she did. And her reply changed my life. Because she emailed back and said that, yes, I could come visit her lab. And so I went there, and the moment I walked in the front door, I knew I had to find a way to come back and work there. It was this bustling, chaotic hub of activity, and scientists were chattering to each other, and they were hunched over microscopes, and you looked outside, and you saw two-story-high statues of DNA in the atrium and nucleotides on the carpet. <laughs> and you had this feeling that you could turn the hint of an idea into an experiment. So as soon as I left, I emailed her and said, hey, I don't care what it takes. If I have to clean petri plates or scrub the floors, just let me come work in your lab. And so that's how I got to spend three years working and learning in my scientific paradise. But of course, it wasn't quite that simple. So I was moving from New Zealand to America, and I was going to go work in this lab, when suddenly I realized I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I mean, I'd worked on bits of biology before, 
but this was an entirely different ballpark. And so I got really freaked out and nervous, and I was afraid, because I thought that I would screw everything up. So that's when my dad gave me a piece of advice I'll never forget. He said, all you have to do is one thing, just this one thing, and you'll be fine. Just make sure when you leave the lab every day that the people you work with are just a little bit happier because you were there. That's it. That's all you need to do. And so from that point on, the answer was always yes to every project and every presentation. Every time someone needed help, I tried to find a way to help them. And so that's how I got to learn to laser worms. And that's how they started teaching me how to build libraries, libraries that could knock out every gene in a worm genome. And we did so many cool experiments. Eventually, we found out that you could starve, mutate, and laser worms, and make them live six times longer than normal. That's mind-blowing. And you could do all of this, and you could contribute a new piece of knowledge to the scientific puzzle when you were just a kid. And so I was doing this and living the dream, but all because of this process of finding a passion, seizing a chance, and pursuing an opportunity. But so, this gets us back to the first question that we started with, which is, what is your passion? What are you passionate about? And I'm in love with science, and here's why. I think scientists are the most powerful people in the world. Because the magical thing about science is that once you start to learn it, and you start to understand it, you see things that no one else can see, and you understand how the world works, and that gives you a very special kind of power. And if you can do this when you're a kid, if you can understand very intimately the fundamental laws that govern how the world works, then you've got a kind of superpower, and suddenly you can start to do things that really matter, and age becomes irrelevant. And the magical thing about science is that even though it's very powerful and it's very beautiful, it's not very complicated. It's just understanding how the world works. And so I loved this as a kid, because if you could do this, if you could understand how a pattern of electrical flashes in your brain was turning incoming light into images, and turning those images into thoughts about the images, then suddenly you saw the world through a very special lens, and science opened up your mind. More than that, you saw an entire dimension that not many other people know about, and you could explore worlds that were invisible to the naked eye. You saw the vastness of the cosmos, and you understood how even the tiniest cell was a miniature universe full of proteins and protons. To sum it up, being a scientist is sort of like this. Imagine walking down a busy city street with people hustling and bustling all around you, and you're caught up in the noise and the traffic and the city lights, when suddenly something makes you stop and look up, and you see this. You see the vastness of the cosmos. You see the expanse of the unknown. You see a million, billion worlds that we know nothing about. And all of that makes you feel intimate and small, and you feel this burning hunger to explore. But even though you feel small, you feel infinite, because you have the power to explore. That is what being a scientist is all about. And that is why we do what we do. So that's what my passion is, and that's what I love. And if you can find something that makes you feel the same way, you'll be eons ahead of your peers. So find that thing that makes you feel that way, and then go for it. Because the world around you was built by people just like you. And you can change it. And you can influence it. And once you realize that, you will never be the same. <laughs>